exercise. What's right for you? There's so many different forms of exercise and it can get so confusing because sometimes you're thinking, well, what do I need to do? What's best for me? As you know, if there was one program that worked for everybody, we'd all be on it, but there isn't. So we need to know what is the best exercise routine for you. Exercise. What's best for you? As in all the years that I've been a trainer, I get this question asked so many times. Should I do cardio? Should I do weights? Should I play a sport? What's the best thing, Tony? What should I be doing? Well, there's one really important factor here that'll help you get what you want out of exercise, and that is this. The exercise you do is the one that works. So if you're not exercising, then you're not going to get the results that you want. As far as the right exercise for you, I usually say to people, do something you absolutely love to do, not something that you think you have to do. You know, when people are forced to do weights, when they don't like doing weights, if people are forced to go for a run when they don't like to run. Now, I'm not saying that you're not going to enjoy it later on down the track. When you first start exercising, of course your body's going to be sore and you're going to feel, you know, a bit tired and and it's going to be difficult. Everybody experiences that. Even the most experienced people that have exercised, Olympic athletes for that matter, they all experience that first time that they ever exercise and that delayed onset of muscle soreness where you wake up, you know, the the day after and two days later and you're in absolute agony and you can't move anything and you think you're going to die. Well, that's only temporary. That's only temporary. But if you can push through that bit of pain, that's just your body waking up saying, wow, we're actually doing something now. And it's so important to do something that you know you're going to be doing on a consistent basis and a regular basis and make sure you're not doing anything that's going to bore you or that down the track you're going to get bored with. So when people ask me, what's the best exercise and what should I do? That answer really relies on you because we're all different. That's like saying, what's the best car to drive? What's the best food item to eat? What's the best movie to watch? We've all got different preferences and we all are different. If there was one program, if there was one program that worked, we'd all be on it. And that is why I get really agitated when certain fads and things come out and everybody jumps on that wagon and then it works for a while and all of a sudden everyone falls off it and then they either the weight they lost, they put it all back on again or the fitness they gained, they lose that again and they're just going around in circles, losing weight, putting on, losing weight, putting on, getting fit, getting unfit, getting fit, stop, start all the time. So it's so important you find an activity or an exercise routine or plan that you really enjoy, really enjoy. Now for me, I love doing weights and I love running. And what I do to make it even more enjoyable is I do it with other people. So that way I'm accountable to someone else. I'm accountable to my running buddies, to my running coach and and family and friends that I do these activities with. The weights I tend to do on my own, although sometimes I might train with one of our better than ever trainers or another client or something just to spice it up a little bit. And as well as training them, it's important that sometimes I get some training. So you're 90% more successful if you exercise with someone else. You're 90% more successful if you exercise with a family member, a friend, or a work colleague, someone that you see on a regular basis because you're making yourselves accountable to each other. This is why only 25% of everybody that exercises ever gets results. That means 75% of people that are exercising, and no matter what exercise routine they do, no matter what sport, no matter what activity they do, are not getting results. 90% 
of the 25% that are getting results, see a personal trainer or a master coach like us. And if you want to ensure that you get the results that you want, whether it be weight loss, whether it be an improving fitness, whether it improved mobility or health, whatever it is, if you can see a personal trainer or a master coach, your, your probability of getting results is a lot greater. Why? Because we are that vehicle that can help you achieve it as quickly as possible. It's like me saying to you, I'm going to throw you in a car that you've never driven before on either left-hand drive or right-hand drive, depending on, on which side of the, 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 the car you, you normally sit on and you drive on. And I'm going to give you a vehicle that's manual that you've never driven manual before and throw you in a city that you've never driven before. You're not going to be able to do it and it's going to be difficult. I'm not saying that you won't be able to achieve it eventually, but it'll be a lot harder for you to achieve. But if you had a driving instructor sitting right next to you telling you exactly where you had to go, when to change gears and what speed to travel and whatever, you'll get there a lot quicker. The same thing with a personal trainer and a master coach. We can make sure that we identify the correct exercise that's right for you and your body because everybody's body is different. So what are we talking about here? There are a number of different forms of exercise and I encourage you to experiment until you find the one that you really, really enjoy. So you can always look at certain sports or activities that you can do. But if it's, say, a sport is not really your thing or a team thing is not really your thing and you want to do something more for yourself and you want to join a gym or go to a studio, then I highly encourage you to start doing some sort of cardiovascular exercise where you raise your heart rate to a certain level that there's a number of ways of measuring this. There's a way we call it 220 minus your age, where you work out what your maximum heart rate is to determine what your maximum heart rate should be. And you can measure your heart rate either by your, your neck or your wrist, or you can buy a fancy uh, heart rate monitor. And these days, most people have got heart rate monitors and, and devices that will tell them what their heart rate is. They'll also tell them how many steps they walk. And just on the steps, if you're starting off and you've never exercised in your life before, get one of these things because they're so good and you can monitor how many steps you walk per day. You want to aim to walk about 10,000 steps a day. 10,000. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, but you'll be surprised on how quickly you can accumulate those steps. And if you're finding that you're struggling to get those steps in, Try and get up a little bit earlier in the morning and get those steps in in the morning and then do a little bit more at lunchtime and then finish them off at night. And if you start doing that, you'll find that uh, you'll get your heart rate up, you'll increase your fat burning and you'll increase your fitness at the same time. And that's a nice, easy way to start. As you get fitter, you then can move it to another level and you can start walking a bit faster and then eventually you can start trying other activities like jogging and then running. And this is when you really start getting your heart rate up. So we calculate 220 minus your age. And then you calculate a percentage of that. So 50% of your maximum heart rate, once you determine what your maximum heart rate is, 220 minus your age, 50, 50 to 60% of that is like a warm-up sort of zone, if you will. Anything below 50% is really you're just, your heart is just resting. So 50 to 60%, your body is in a warm-up zone. 60 to 70%, your body is in zone two, which is like a low-intensity fat-burning zone. So if you're just starting off and you're quite overweight and you, don't, you feel a bit worried about going to a gym or, or doing something that is going to overexert you, say you're elderly um, you might want to start off on exercising in a low-intensity fat-burning zone. As you then progress and you start finding that's getting a little bit easier, you then can move into a higher level, being a high-intensity fat-burning zone, which is 70 to 80% of your maximum heart rate. And that'll just challenge you a little bit further. You'll start to sweat a lot more. You'll start to find that you won't be able to string a sentence together when you're talking with the person that you're exercising with. If you happen to do it with your partner or 
a child or your son or your daughter or, or a, a friend or colleague, and you'll find that as you progress through the ranges, then 80 to 90% of your maximum heart rate becomes an aerobic zone where you're really focusing on your fitness. So less fat is burned and more carbohydrates are burned. Because what happens to the body is, your body goes, it's, it's like three taps. So think about your body when it burns fuel. It's burning essentially three fuel sources. Sources. It's burning fat, protein, and carbohydrates. And all of them are on at all, all the times. So you're just burning different amounts at different times depending on what your heart rate is and the type of activity that you're doing. So with, the, with these fuel sources, when you're at rest, you're predominantly... Your, your, your fat is very, very little, your carbohydrates is very little, and your protein is very little. And your body's just working on, on idle stage. As you start exercising, the carbohydrates tap starts increasing, and you start burning your blood sugar level. Any sugar or any carbohydrates, which we call blood sugar or glucose, in your bloodstream. When those levels start dropping, your body is very, very smart. It goes to the liver and it says to the liver to release liver glycogen or sugar in the liver and it releases into the bloodstream and it uses that. It uses sugar in the muscles, which is what we call muscle glycogen. And then when all those levels start dropping and you've been exercising for a period of time, the body starts to get a bit more efficient and it says, well, you know what? Why should we just use up all this sugar when we've got a more efficient fuel source being fat and fat provides more bang for your buck it provides 37 kilojoules of energy instead of four so why won't you use a more efficient fuel source so what the body does is it opens up the fat cell fat seeps out into the bloodstream in the form of what we call free fatty acids and it travels through the bloodstream to the working muscle and that'll help you burn more fat and the muscle uptakes that fat and burn more fat so that's what happens at a lower intensity and then as you progress through, as you burn more calories and as your body starts to burn uh, more fat. There gets to a point where it can't burn as much fat anymore because now the intensity of the workout is a lot greater so your body starts to burn a lot more carbohydrates. And so when you're working at a high intensity level, when you get to that level 80 to 90% of your maximum, and then 90 to 100% of your maximum, you're pretty much working what we call your ATP system, your adenotriphosphate system, which is just flat out, and your PC system, which is a phosphocretin system, which is where your body's just burning high energy fuel, those fuels, and it only lasts about 10 seconds. So that's another form of exercise, high intensity training. It's very, very popular at the moment, gets the heart rate up, and it strengthens the heart. So what you got to remember is the heart is a muscle like any other muscle in your body. And you want to work it so that the heart muscle gets stronger. If the heart muscle gets stronger, it can pump more blood. If it pumps more blood, it gets more oxygen around throughout the body and the bloodstream. And if it can transport oxygen, you're burning more. Uh, you can only burn fat with oxygen. So if you're transporting more oxygen, you can burn more fat. And therefore, it uptakes more fat and you burn more fat when you're working at those lower ends. So if you only ever do high intensity work, you've got to be careful that you don't burn yourself out. Every now and then, you've got to bring that, that training down and you've got to recover and work at a lower intensity level as well. So I encourage people to do low intensity fat burning, high intensity fat burning, fitness work or aerobic work. And every now and then you're doing your high intensity work where you're working at, at 80, 90 to 100% of your maximum heart rate and then you drop it back to your low intensity fat being and you're doing your interval training or Tabata, 20 seconds flat out and then a rest and that's another form of exercise. There's a million different forms of exercise. So I don't want you to get confused with that so many that are out there. I'm trying to keep it as simple and as effective as possible for you. Because at the end of the day, if you're not exercising, then we need you to get started. And this is the reason why a lot of people don't get started, because they're fearful of what they need to do, because there's so much information out there, they don't know what they should be doing. So I say start slow. Don't go out there and go 100 miles an hour and, and injure yourself. 
Because if you haven't exercised for a long time or ever, your muscles, your joints, your ligaments and tendons are not used to it. They need time to adapt. They need time to adjust. It's the same as saying to people, you know, I'm going to go and run a marathon. Well, you're not just going to go out there and start running 42 kilometers. You need to actually start slowly. So you start by walking. Then you start by jogging. Then you start by running your first kilometer. Then your second kilometer. Then 5K. Then 10K. And then a half marathon being 21.1 kilometers. And then you work yourself up to a full marathon of 42.2. And if it really rings your bell and you love marathons and that high cardiovascular type of training, you can then challenge yourself with an ultra marathon, which is 100 plus Ks or beyond that marathon 42.2. So cardiovascular exercise is really, really, really important for fat burning, if that's one of your goals, right? And it's really important for improving your fitness and improving the strength of your heart and your cardiovascular system. So I usually say cardio gets the fat off. But then there's another half of this equation, which is weights or weight bearing activity, being body weight training or any form of weight training, being dumbbell work, barbell work, any form of body work training, any form of resistance training or strength training. This is what keeps the fat off because you are strengthening your muscles and ensuring that your body is, and your muscles are, are, are strong, your ligaments and tendons are toned and strong, and are we able to withstand the impact of running and activities like that. So weight training and doing the correct weight training is important. So you might start off with some dumbbell work, and a trainer or master coach can design a plan for you to make sure that you're doing the right exercises for your body. And you want to make sure that that weight training routine or strength training program is balanced. You don't want to just be doing what a lot of people do, just chest and buys, and you build this massive chest and big arms, and all of a sudden your posture's all you know, deformed, and you're finding that you're getting shoulder problems and neck problems and headaches and back problems and all sorts of problems. We want to make sure that it's balanced, so that way if you work in the front, the muscles in the front of your body, being your chest and your abs, you're also working the muscles in the back of your body, being your back, upper back and lower back muscles. Same with your legs. You want to make sure you're working your quads and your hamstrings. You want to make sure your, body, your workout is balanced. So your weight training program is balanced. So if you're not sure what you need to be doing there, you need to reach out to us or to someone to help you design the right plan for you. And believe me, if you're beyond the age of 40, there's highly probable that you're going to have an injury or a niggle or something. And, as, and if you've got an activity that, or a work, a type of job that is very sedentary, like you're sitting in a desk all the time, you're going to find that you're going to have lots of neck pain, back pain, um, lower back pain, tight quads, tight hamstrings. We need to loosen you up and increase your mobility. As you get older, the muscles get tighter, the muscles get shorter, your body's not as flexible and elastic as it used to be when you were younger. So the appropriate program, you don't want to do anything that's too ballistic. You want to do active range of motion stretching rather than static stretching. You want to be doing activities that increase the length of your muscle, that improve your flexibility, that allow you to feel free and, and, and mobile. So as well as improving your mobility, there's weight-bearing activities and training activities and strength training activities that will help improve the strength of vital muscles like your lower back muscles, like your core muscles, and all those abdominal muscles that you need in order to do the daily tasks that you need to do. So functional exercises are really important because they're exercises that allow you that relate day to day-to-day -day activities. So picking things up, pushing things overhead, they're all important. So dumbbell work, barbell work, kettlebell work, any body weight training work like push-ups and sit-ups and all those sort of things are really, really important. So focus on those activities first and then move to machines and cables and bands and all sorts of other fancy stuff later on. Stick to the basics. That is something that I enforce all the time. Keep it simple, the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. People make up so many exercises because they're trying, and I see so many trainers doing these ridiculous exercises that half the time the client doesn't really need to do. 
the muscle only really works a few ways. You know, a hinge joint being, you know, the elbow joint only works this way. You can vary the exercise as much as you want for variety, but at the end of the day, keep it simple. And when you're starting off, you don't need to do anything fancy. You want to do something that, one, like we said, you enjoy, and two, that you can actually do. If the activity is too difficult for your body and you risk injuring yourself, then you're not going to keep doing it, and then you quit, and then you put all that weight back on, you get unfit and unhealthy, and you're back to square one. We don't want that for you. We want to make sure that what you're doing is sustainable, that you can do it for the rest of your life, no matter how old you are. I know myself, I'm 48 years old. I can't lift the amount of weights that I used to lift when I was younger. You know, I can't run at the speed that I was running when I was younger. But there are activities that I enjoy, and it doesn't mean that I've got to stop doing them. It just means that I've got to be mindful of, of how I do them. It might mean that I could give myself more rest. You know, so we do advocate that you train at least four to five, sometimes six times a week, but you've got to listen to your body. You've got to make sure that you're doing an exercise plan that you can sustain that you know that you can do on a daily basis or every second day. So organizing your day, one of the things that I encourage our better than ever family members to do is do say weight training on one day or turn it day and then the opposite day do some form of cardio if you've got the time six days a week so for example you might do weights monday wednesday friday and you might do your cardio on tuesday thursday and saturday and then you have sunday off now that can vary like sure there's people that you know, they're busy on a Wednesday night and they can't do that. So they break up their routine and they do it Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then they have Saturday, Sunday off. That's fine too if you can only train four days a week. But you want to try and do as many things, as much exercise as you can within the limits of your body and within your fitness limits. So as you get fitter, and this is another one when people hit a plateau when they exercise, they start a new exercise routine, they get the results. And then all of a sudden, they hit a plateau. They've lost a bit of weight, and then they hit a plateau. You need to vary the type of exercise that you do. So if you're doing the same exercise routine, the same cardio routine all the time, your body eventually is going to adapt, and the body is is designed to adapt. Think about the first time you drove somewhere, like to work or Um, to a destination that you went to the first time. You had to really concentrate when you went there, when you drove there. If you do it day in and day out, like you drive the same way to work every day, now your body's just on automatic pilot. You don't even have to think about it anymore. It just does it automatically. Well, that's the same with exercise. When you're exercising, if you're doing an activity, the same exercise, same exercise, the same weight, same repetitions all the time, your body's going to adapt. And eventually, you're not going to get the results anymore. So you need to change it up. You need to either increase the weight and make it more challenging. You either need to increase the repetitions to make it more challenging, or you need to do both. Or you need to increase the number of sets that you do. Or decrease your rest time. There's so many ways. Or superset, where you're doing two exercises back-to-back without a rest, like a circuit program. You know, there's so many ways of doing exercise when people ask me what's the best exercise for me that really depends on you and that's what we do here at better than ever we make sure that we find out very quickly within the first few sessions what the best routine is for you so that way you're getting the maximum results so if you're not sure what you need to do ensure that you get the right advice from the right people don't try and do it on your own because you might risk injuring yourself if you can do it with someone you care about and the someone, someone that can keep you accountable, you're 90% more successful. If you can document it in a journal, you're 90% more successful. Find the activity that you love and do that every day if you can and I guarantee you'll get the results you want to get. Follow that up with your eating plan. You're 80% more successful with what you eat and you're 20% with the exercise, you put the two together, game over. Results start here. Everyone deserves to be better than ever.